now is your time to cross train unless you're really itching for your sport. So do things that parallel your sport. Don't feel like you have to be tied towards doing your sport, but mm -hmm. more look at elements of your sport, break those elements apart and play with those. So it gives you a cognitive break where, and it also gives your body a break. So it starts to balance out your body instead of doing the same thing over and over again. Can we jump in and do a couple examples on that? Yeah, definitely. Okay. My favorite part of what I do. So let's say basketball and soccer are coming to mind. So if we start with basketball, what are the pieces from basketball that you think are, in terms of movement, that are most fundamental to keep doing? Speed is really important. Mm -hmm. Reaction is really mm -hmm. important. And your ability to change direction and cut. As soccer requires a lot of uh, cutting and change of direction. And at foot agility, which is it's also changing a different, one of the things I'm always thinking about is neural pathways and it yeah. like, and just because you are working always with your hand in basketball doesn't mean that that won't translate a little bit to your foot. So the better you get at doing things in general, even if it's not exactly, um, it's not shooting and it's not um, dribbling, dribbling with your feet, it's, it's learning new skills. Your brain can take that information and utilize it later. And so what I hear you saying is to be creative about the ways in which you let your body access skills you already know. So for speed and reaction, find some fun games that include that, you know, like uh, I, it sounds ridiculous, but the first thing that came to mind was tag, but things like, you know, being able to, like you say, work on direction and cut and shift and change right. with your agility and grab a soccer ball to do yeah. that. Don't worry about it. You don't have a basketball court. Yeah. Or a ball and you bounce the ball against the wall and you've got to respond to wherever it goes. If you are lucky enough to have one of those funky bouncing balls with the knobs on it so it's unpredictable it's even better and then the other thing to think about is cognitive load when you're in decision making so like if you're just doing a regular workout for example they did this with children they set up an obstacle course that like maybe there was a disc that was green mm -hmm. and so everything that they arrived at they had to state the color but the color was opposite or they had to state the shape and then they had to do something. So like if they arrived on the yellow disc, they had to say red and touch their toes. And when they went to the blue ball, they had to like touch their nose and say green. But it's, it's really challenging you to be able to move and still like make decisions rapidly and stuff. And the benefits you get when you're actually in a uh, under duress, you know, play, if you're playing basketball or whatever, and the cognitive decisions you have to make constantly on the floor. So, mm -hmm. so for basketball, we're saying like, use your feet, try other sports, um, you know, make the, make the, uh, the reaction time and the um, agility aspect of it a little more diverse and try to make it fun. Mm -hmm. For soccer, how would that recommendation go just briefly in terms of, it feels like for soccer, you really have to keep your, or something like it, you'd have to keep your aerobic capacity up pretty high. Oh, definitely. And so you could cross train, like, especially if you have injuries, um, maybe um, moving out of the impact that is running and uh, maybe going, moving over to bike or swimming if that's available to you. Actually, tennis is great because you can play, you can play it against the wall, right? And at mm -hmm. least you have to move and you have to adapt. And it's a little different because you have the racket and it's a little further away, but um, you can play with stuff like that. I think some of these things about being creative and a little bit silly and making it fun and going to other arenas, even something like, you know, the handball, dodgeball, whatever, <laughs> that you're doing to um, have to have a reaction, have to work on your agility. But I, I think there are things that a lot of people wouldn't necessarily think of to do and think it was legitimately going to help them in their training. <laughs> yeah, totally. I mean, it really, you know, I think one of the best things that you can do is watch children play and mimic them. Children are moving in ways that are very fundamental movement patterns. They are constantly going into squats and half meals and working on this dynamic movement constantly. So, you, you know, like you said, play like a child.